Okay, so Dynamite have uh, recently brought out the Crave, but in base mix form. Uh, and this is basically exactly the same bait as what you get in the shops when you've got the boilies already rolled. Um, but the advantages with this stuff is if, if you want to knock up a paste, say for barbel fishing or, or for carp fishing, whatever really, then you can do it with this. Just It actually comes with a bag of stuff, a bottle of stuff rather. Let's have a look. So you've got your attractors with it as well. I'll smell that as soon as I open it up. So there's the liquids, all knocked up, ready to go. In fact, I'll have a quick smell of that. I can smell it already through the bag. Strong. Yeah, lovely. Salmon and crabby smell. And the base mix itself, which is exactly the same, like I say, as what the uh, Crave Ballies are made from. And in a minute, we'll go through into the kitchen and I'll show you how I go about making cork ball pop-ups. Now, you know, obviously there are already pop-ups in the Crave range. Uh, you've got um, not only the food bait type ones, which have got the cork dust in, you've also got the washed out fluoro ones, you know, the off pink color, uh, which are both really, really good. The only thing is, if you're using big hooks, say with like chod rigs and hinge stiff links and what have you, and you're leaving the rods out for a long period of time, 24 hours at a time, then sometimes it's an advantage to make your own pop-ups with cork balls. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll go through into the kitchen and I'll show you how I, how I go about making my own cork ball pop-ups. Right. Now, this base mix as it is, is absolutely bang on. You can roll your cork ball pop-ups exactly how this comes out of the bag, no problem at all. Um, what I would say is I quite often sieve it out just to make sure you've got any larger lumps out of the bait, out of the base mix. And the reason for that is when you're molding a thin skin around a cork ball pop-up, you just don't want any big bits. It's okay when you're, in fact, it's nice when you're actually rolling food baits, the actual free offerings, to have a few bigger bits in there, bits of bird food and what have you. But when you're rolling a thin skin, you want to get rid of, sieve out any of the big bits and bobs. So, now, I'm actually making these pop-ups, you know, this, this is genuine, I'm, I'm actually making these up for my own use for the spring. Now, the other good thing about making cork ball pop-ups when you're making your own, is you can tweak it and get it exactly how you want it. Um, and something I've often done, uh, especially in the spring or sort of summertime, is I had a small amount of ground pellet. Doesn't matter what bait I'm using, whether it was the sauce, if I was using the sauce base mix to make up some cobalt pop-ups, in this case the Crave, I always like to add a little bit of ground pellet. Now, the type of pellets I've got, two of the dynamite ones, I've got some rubber red ones and some marine pellets. You don't have to do this, this is just like how I go about it. I want to keep it as genuine as possible and show you exactly how I do it. Now, all I've done, I've put those through a blender, and you can see there, that's, that's uh, the marine alibut pellet and the robin red pellet, which I've ground up in a blender. And you can imagine there's quite a few coarse bits and bobs in there. So I put that through the sieve. Like that. And I'll sieve it out to make sure that I've got a nice fine powder with no big lumps and bits and bobs in. And you can see, just sieving that out, you'll see what I mean. You can already see that there's a few big bits and bobs in there that you don't want, obviously, when you're only rolling a thin skin around a pop-up. So that's what we want, is the nice fine powder. I'll put that to one side. We're only going to roll up the one egg mix. Have a little bag. So like I say, this is just ground pellet. You know, you can't even buy ground pellet already done for you, you know, especially like in the match, match fishing sort of section of the tackle shops. I like to do it fresh, fresh pop-up, fresh pellets. There we are, got this little bag of ground pellet. And the main reason I use this is because it's very oily. Um, it's just sort of putting a bit of oil content into the bait. And it's just always worked well for me. I'm not sure why, I just know it works. Right. Got a Crave base mix.
to that I add some of the ground pellet not too much about 10-20% ground pellet is what I do like so and you're not going to want to watch stand there for half hour while I sieve it but basically I'm now going to put this through the sieve I'll get rid of those big bits put them in the bin I'm going to put this through the sieve make sure there's no lumps in there and we'll come back to you in a minute or so so there you go we've sieved out all the bigger lumps like I say, if you're knocking up a paste or, or uh, just a standard boilie, for instance, like obviously you want, want those bigger bits in there, no problem at all. But when it comes to rolling the actual corporal pop-ups, much better to get rid of that. And you can. I mean, in the old days, I used to put that back through the blender, you know what I mean, and make it fine again and then put it back in the base mix, but there's no need for that on this occasion. So there we go. That's basically the Crave base mix with some ground-up pellet at around 10-20% of the ground-up pellet which is nice and oily, and it's nice and fine, no lumps in it whatsoever. So that's the base mix nearly done. The other thing we need to do is egg albumin. Now, if you've not used egg albumin before, basically it's a hardener. Uh, and when you've only got that very thin skin around a cork ball pop-up, it is well worthwhile using. Otherwise you can end up with pop-ups that are just too soft. Uh, you know, and if it takes you half a dozen chucks, for instance, to get, get the bait to the right mark and you're really in, in between, you'll find that the outside sort of pits and, you know, just where it's too soft. So a bit of egg albumin goes a long way. Uh, and you can buy this, you know, it's just egg white powder. It's from Tesco's. I think that little, you get half a dozen sachets and it was like about a pound, pound, one pound twenty or something. So well cheap. And I always get it from Tesco's just because that way I know that it's, it's fresh. You know, it's human grade stuff. Uh, and they go for it all the time, so it's a nice fresh stock of it. I think I've got one open here already. So. And one sachet of this is what I use to around about a pound of base mix, I use one sachet of this stuff. So let's see how much base mix we got there. I'm not going to use all that because there's a little bit less base mix there than I'd normally have. And then mix that in with it. You can either do that before you sieve it or after. It's very fine powder anyway, so there's certainly no lumps in the agalbumin. Mean. So there's our base mix for rolling the cork ball pop-ups, ready to rock. Nice and fine, well mixed. Right. Next step, crack an egg into a bowl. I used to have chickens down at my parents, so I'd always go down there and get a nice fresh egg, you know what I mean? Proper free range one, but got to use a Tesco's one this time around, but I'm sure it'll be all right. So just one egg. Crack him into the bowl like so. Lovely. There's three or four mil of the liquid attractors. Normally I'm used to using these in concentrated form so I wouldn't use quite as much but um, I'm just not, I don't know if Matt knows, I'm not sure how concentrated this is. 
It smells like the meat attractors to me, it's very strong. But, you know, when it comes to rolling, uh, it's just your hook baits only, so you do want them fairly strong, you know what I mean? How much you put in is, is up to you, how, how, how strong you want it to be. There you go. Next we get a base mix. Go slowly with it, you know, don't try and add too much in at one go. And I'll tell you why, there's a good reason for that. I start off by making it quite wet, like so. And then I'll leave that, once it's at that stage, and it's soft, way too soft and sticky to, uh, to be rolling at the moment, but I'll leave it like that for five minutes. And the reason for that is so that the, the base mix, it's got, still got bits of bird food in and all the, all the rest of it. So you want that base mix to soak up the attractors and if you do it this way and you leave it to stand for a few minutes, what you'll find is when it comes to actually rolling the pop-ups, it's not drying out on you. If you go, go ahead, if you do it all too quickly and roll like the base mix, get it to how you think is the right consistency to rolling pop-ups, then what you find is sort of 15, 20 minutes down the line, it's a little bit too stiff and a little bit too dry and it starts cracking as you're trying to roll it around the, around the court balls. So I'll get it to that sort of stage, nice and soft, and then I'll leave it to set for five minutes, make a cup of tea or what have you, and then I'll come back to it, add a little bit more dry powder, get it exactly how I want it, and then also I put that ball of base mix, once it's ready, I put it in a plastic bag to stop it drying out any further. So we'll come back to that in a minute. All right, so we've left that for five minutes to sit, and you can see just in that time how much that stiffened up, that base mix. Well, it's always important to leave it to settle. Now, to get it right, exactly how I want it, the right sort of consistency, not too soft, not too firm. I'm now going to add a little bit more base mix. We'll do that down here. Don't go too mad, you don't want to muck it up at this point. Now I know a lot of you that have been making your own pop-ups for years, you know, you're not going to learn a great deal here, but some of the people watching this won't have ever made up their own court ball pop-up, so I'm going to sort of take you through every step exactly how I do it. Let's get in there, a little bit, a little bit tacky still. Now once you've got that base mix right and you know that you're dead happy with it, you might have knocked up a pound, a kilo of it, whatever. Uh, once you're perfectly happy with that base mix, there's nothing stopping you. You can knock up the whole lot in one go, you know, like uh, whatever eggs, whatever attractions you put in it, do the whole lot, knock up a big ball of paste, like so, and then break it off into balls and freeze it in, in individual balls, sort of enough to make 30 or 40 quart ball pop-ups at a time. And that way you haven't got to worry about it for the rest of the year type thing, you know. Freeze them up every time you want to do up some fresh pop-ups. You haven't got to go for all this malarkey, you've just got to get out a ball of paste and for it. And that is perfect. Right, now, once you've got it to that stage, it's exactly how you want it. Put it in a plastic bag stop it drying out any further. That's that, ready to go. Don't need any of this anymore. Like that. The court balls. These are 12 mil, which is for making a pop-up of around 15, 16 mil in size. So there's that. What else do I need? Right. A plate for putting your pop-ups once you finish rolling them to put it on. And what you want to do is just use a tiny bit of oil, 
This is just a straightforward sunflower oil. You could use whatever oil you want, salmon oil, hemp oil, whatever. Um, but all it's for is to stop the baits from sticking to the plate. You're just greasing up the plate, basically. Tiny bit more of that. That's that. We're not going to roll them in here, we'll take these through into the living room. Normally I watch a bit of telly, have a bit of music on, whatever while I'm doing it. So that's that, that's that, I think I've got everything I need. Da, da, da. Yep. Now, break off a small ball to begin with. Keep that bit wrapped up so it doesn't dry out any further. A little bit soft, but it should be okay. You just break it off a small piece, moulding it around the cork ball, pop up around the cork ball. Not too much, like so. A bit less still. And there you are, easy. And take your time with them, you know, put some love into them. And the most important one of all is the one that's going on your hook at the end of the day, so you want to get them right. I try to keep them all, you know, as, as close as I can to the size of it, you know, you, you want to keep them all about the same size. That way you haven't got to muck around too much when it comes to balancing out your rigs. And that's it, as easy as that. And I'll quite often, often, sometimes I'll knock up 60 or 70 of these in one go. That's off. What I will say is this base mix does roll perfectly. You know, some of them are a little bit dry and flaky. This just seems to have just about the right amount of oil in it. And it just rolls like a dream, absolutely perfect. I'm sure the ground down pellet helps a lot in that, in that department. Slightly big, so we pinch off a bit more of that paste. That's it, that's the last one. Give them a little swizzle on the old plate, makes them even rounder, gives them a coating of that oil. That's it. All we've got to do now is boil them. Back to the kitchen. Okay, we've brought the water to the boil. Make sure it's boiling really well and all. With that amount of pop-ups, I'm going to put those in in one go. If I'd rolled any more, if I'd rolled say 60 or 70 odd, then I'd boil them in two goes. You know what I mean? Otherwise the water goes off the boil, which isn't what you want. But with that amount, I can get away with putting them all in in one go. Now, because it's only a thin skin, and I've got egg albumin in that base mix as well, which is, acts as a, as a really good hardener. Um, I'm only going to need to boil those for about 90 seconds, two minutes max. The longer you boil them, you're just washing out the attractors, boiling out the attractors, and also you can get like a, anyone who's rolled their own corporal pop-ups, I know what I'm talking about here, you get like blisters on the side of the boat, which you don't want too many of them. 
That'll do. That is literally enough. We're going to air dry them afterwards anyway. Right. So. Next, we put those on some paper towels. Try and find ones. Right, you see what I mean there? You get sometimes you get slight blisters on them where it's only a very thin skin around the cork ball. And at this stage, it's worth squashing those out, and you'll find that once they've cooled off, those blisters will disappear. So Almost like an air bubble, really. But if you squash them out while they're still warm, you won't know nothing about them. That's it, we leave those to cool off for a short while. So they're cooled off now. And you can either leave them there to air dry on their own, but I'll tell you what I tend to do. I'll just use a paper bag. Drop them in a paper bag like so. And if, uh, if I'm desperate for them and I want them like the very next day or something, then I might put them on the radiator overnight or in the airing cupboard. Uh, but nine times out of ten, I'll just leave them like that and they air dry on their own in the paper bag. Uh, and I think somewhere or other I've got some, oh, let me have a look. Blue Peter Styley, some I made earlier. And you can see they're rock hard, air dried out. And they'll last indefinitely like that. There's no need to put them in the freezer. They're dried out that hard. Um, I'll still drop them into the fridge sort of thing, just to make sure. I mean, these are actually from last summer. I made these up last summer, and these will still be fine for this coming spring. Lovely. So, there you go. That's how to make corporal pop-ups. It's very simple, and the beauty of it is, you know, you can tweak things. You know, you might want to add one or two little attractors of your own, or... Like you saw me doing, I like to use a little bit of ground pellet in with, in with my base mix. Um, you know, you, you're always doing something that's slightly different to the next person. You can get them exactly how you want them. And of course, when it comes to inch stiff links and uh, chod rigs and that, when using bigger hooks, like size fours and fives and what have you especially, then it's important to have a very buoyant pop-up, one that's going to keep its buoyancy indefinitely. You know, like these will stay up, or, well, they won't, they won't sink at all because of the cork ball. You know, that, they'll stay up indefinitely. Uh, I quite often leave my rods out for up to 24 hours at a time, so that's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs>